Hi, welcome to another lesson in Computer Science 1 with Python. We are be in the beginning of a unit on object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming really can unlock the power of our programs, really change what we can do. We're going to be able to make much more exciting programs, much more intricate and detailed uh, games and other such assignments. So I'm really excited to continue sharing this with you. In our last lesson, we, we just got to barely introduce object-oriented programming and or OOP. And we looked at how to create objects from classes. We, we wrote classes and, and we had ways to describe that. We talked about different characteristics that an animal might have. Today, I want to look at adding not just characteristics, uh, but also some methods and some behaviors, okay? So we're going to start with a rather simple class. We'll then write some more classes and then come back and make this starting class a little bit more interesting. So uh, this project is called School Stuff. So just I have it called school underscore stuff, all lowercase, dot pi is the name of my module. Okay, let's start by making a class called student. So what are the different things that describe a student? We might have their gender, their name, their grade, and some other things like that. So we want to make sure we include those in our constructor. So we make a constructor by saying def underscore underscore init underscore underscore two underscores that's shift minus. Now we put a self. Self is something that's necessary in each one of the methods that we write and constructors for a class. So we'll give name, gender, and age. Let's we'll say that, okay? So to make this actually belong to the student, we then use that word self and we say self.name is name, self.gender is gender, and self.age gets age. So that's pretty much it right now. That's what we have learned how to do so far. So I'm just going to run it and then let's check uh, what, we, what we've done so far and see if it, you know, we can remember how to do it. And then we'll build on that. So I'm going to make a student called ST1. And the way you make a student is you call the name of the class. That will automatically call a constructor. And then we're going to supply it with this information. Uh, Jed, male, and I'm 41. And so you can see that I already have, and if you press the period, because everything is, is, is accessed through what's called the dot operator, and then press tab, it should bring up the information. So these are all the, these are all the instance variables. They are unique to me. My age is 41. If I make a different student, then they're going to have totally different characteristics. Oops. Because that's not just a variable age, that's a variable age assigned to that student. So you see how we've really enlarged uh, the amount of information we can keep track of and decreased the amount of just constant number of variables. We're not going to have to make variables for every little thing because we can assign it. Excuse me, we can assign it to an object. All right, so that was just a brief little review there. Now, we're going to add some behaviors called methods. So let's start with our first method say hello. So when we write a method, we always have the word self in there. If we need additional information for the method to work, then we will put them in our parameters after the word self. For this one, let's just say self. And we're going to print. Let's print hello. My name is and then I'm going to say I'm going to close that quote and I'll say plus this is called concatenating when we add two things together they need to either both be numbers or both be strings so I'll ensure that they're that it's a string by saying str self.name so that should say my name and then let's put a period at the end of that make it look like a nice well formatted sentence so I went back and added 
Notice I have a space here because I need that space before my name or else it'll run together. All right, let's take a look at how that works. So let's make a student. So I'll need to fill in all these parameters. And if we hit tab, we get that list. And there's our age, gender, name. But you'll notice we have something else now. We have say hello. And it says, hello, my name is Jed. Because we have programmed that object to say hello using that object's name. If I make another object with a different name, like I did before, then we're going to see that object. Um, oops, I called ST1. I was like, what in the world? Um, sorry, ST2. Yeah, ST1 is still Jed. ST2 has the name of Aura. We saw this same thing when we looked at Turtle. So I want to go back and review that. So I'm just going to quickly, um, from Turtle, import, um, let's just say import Turtle. That's all I need, really. So then I'm going to say uh, T1 equals Turtle. And you'll notice it brings up a graphics window. And I'll say T2 equals Turtle. And I can control uh, the way this turtle behaves in such a way that one turtle moves and the other doesn't. The state of one turtle is affected, but not the other. So t1.forward100, that's me telling that turtle to move forward, but t2 is a different turtle. I can change that color of that turtle and make that turtle move forward. So you can see that each turtle has its own states, its own behaviors associated with it because it's its own individual unique object, just like each student is its own individual unique student. This turtle object has the ability to be changed. We can change some of its states. The initial state of its color being black, we were able to change to blue. We could write methods that could allow us to change that as well. So let's write a method that allows us to change a state of our student. We could write a change name method, a change gender, or a change age. Let's do a change name method. So if I'm going to change the name, though, I need to have something that I can use to tell the student what the new name is. So I'm going to have to include a parameter, maybe called new name. So self doesn't really count as one of the parameters. Self is identifying that this is a method that belongs to this object, the student itself. Get it? That's how we use that word. So now I can say self.name is now going to be assigned the value new name. So just like I was able to change the color of my turtle before, now with this class that I'm writing, I can also change my name of my student. I can say um, student, and then I'm going to give it a name. I'll say um, Ryan, male, uh, say 16. And I can say, change name. And I can give it um, a different name. And you'll see that it has a new name. I can also directly access the name and change it back to Ryan like this. So I can actually directly access the name of my student. And I don't have to change it through a method. You can see now it's been changed. So why would I write a method to change a name um, instead of just changing it directly? When we had the turtle, let's go ahead and look at that again. So I'll say from turtle, import turtle. And then I can say, um, well, let's take a look at the turtle and see what we have. 
Well, we have a lot of things here, don't we? So when you start having a lot of different things to have to deal with, what's going to happen is it gets confusing. And we like and we and some of these things are methods like go forward and others of them could be variables. And we want to have we prefer to interact with methods. So what you'll see a lot of programmers will do is they'll start putting underscores in front of things that they don't want you to access directly, like the color or from our student, it might be the name. So you can see how that kind of goes. And that, by putting in an underscore, it moves it to the bottom of the list. So that's just a way to, to control access by moving it to the bottom of the list. It's pretty simple. Um, that's just all about some advanced concepts about encapsulization. But I wanted you to understand for this part of the lesson that when we write a class we can change variables directly by just accessing the variable and changing it or we can write methods that allow us to change the variable and the further you go in programming right now we'll just we'll use both the preferred method is to use a method to change it um, Pygame kind of uses both uh, but it's you know it's just a matter of personal opinion to some degree so anyway, those are two methods in our student class. Um, definitely this method will need to stay a method because, you know, we wanted to actually do something. This method here, we could keep or delete based on whether or not we need to change their name. So I'll just go ahead and delete it and we'll continue accessing name directly if we need to. All right. So that's done. Let's make another class. And I'm going to make that a, on top of here. So I'm going to make another class um, because we're making all about, it's all about school stuff. Okay. So right now I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a book. Okay. So class book. And I'm going to make an initializer. So it's double underscore. And my book's going to have a title and an author and a number of pages. And all the initializer does is just make those variables assigned to itself. So self.title gets the value of title, self.author gets the value of author, and self.pages gets the value of pages. All right, so what kind of methods would we associate with this book? Well, there's a couple methods we're going to do. The first method I want to do is something about displaying the information. So I'm going to say uh, describe. So the book can describe itself, okay? And I want to actually, this time I'm going to say return. So instead of printing, I'm going to say return. That way, when you call this method, it'll give you a string and you can decide whether or not you want to use it. If you want to print it or you want to put it in a graphics thing or store it in a variable. So sometimes it's preferable to just return instead of print directly. So I'm going to return. Let's, let's, be, let's string everything. Self.title. So I'll return to self.title, and then by, then I'll put self.author, and again, those should be strings, so stringing them is probably unnecessary, but they may not be for some reason, uh, so it's always better safe than sorry, and then I'm going to put just a space, and then I'm going to put str self.pages, now that'll be a number, so it's very important that we string it. And I'll just say pages long. Okay. And it's like a fragment or something like that. So I'm just going to leave it without a period. All right. We're going to do one more. We're going to say get read time. And the read time requires you to tell me how many pages per minute you can read. So given the number, the pages per minute, we can return how long it will take. So we can say self.pages, I'm going to return self.pages divided by pages per minute. And that will tell us uh, a value of how many minutes it will take us to read it. Um, but we could also return it in hours as well by simply um, multiplying that value are dividing that value by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. Okay, so I'm going to say get read time. I, I'm going to make this a little bit more. Uh, hours. There we go. 
All right, cool. It takes the pages per minute, um, and it returns the time in hours. How many hours will it take you to read it? All right, so let's go ahead and let's run the program. Add the module, and let's create a, let's create a book. So B1 equals book. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. And it's a pretty long book. Probably like, I don't know, it's probably maybe like 500 pages. I don't know. All right. So B1 dot describe. Notice that it just returns that. So if we were writing a program, we would have to actually tell it to print that if we wanted to see that. In the interactive shell, I can just see it. And there it is. So you can see this is this is showing you the value that it returned. Okay. Uh, I could also store it in the description variable and make a description variable. And then whenever I'm ready, print it. Like that. Okay, we also know, of course, that we still have uh, values for the author and the title and the pages. But we can also say b1.getreadtime in hours. And I'm going to say that I read, um, oh, I don't know. Let's say we read pretty fast, right? Two pages a minute. That's pretty fast. Um now, then it would take me four hours and, yeah, a little over four hours and 15 minutes. Um, or a little less than that, because that's, that's only like 10 minutes, because it's 60 minutes in an hour. So, there we go. All right, let's do another class. This time, we're going to make a class for a pencil. So, we're going to say class pencil. And I know these are kind of silly. The, the book class actually might make sense, you know, to actually be used in a database program or for a library or something like that. But we're just kind of learning our fundamentals to explore this. So I'm going to say self. Um, and we're just talking about, let's talk about default values. We, we briefly talked about that last time. So uh, we'll start with just a things that will describe a pencil. I'm going to say um, uh, hardness. And that's a number, right? Like number two hardness, maybe. Uh, color and sharpness. I'm going to say is sharp. So when you say is sharp, that, that will implies true or false. Either it's sharp or it's not sharp, right? Okay, so um, then we need to assign them self.hardness equals hardness. Self.color is color and self.is sharp is is sharp but let's just, let's give it some default values let's say uh, hardness is by default uh, equal to the number two it is a yellow number two and by default most pencils you get are not sharp when you first get them right okay now it would make sense in this case to definitely have a method that will com that will change one of the variables because as we talked about earlier it's diff it's actually preferred to change variables through methods as opposed to accessing a variable directly but another reason why it might be a good idea is because it just makes sense logically in the way people think so if i have a pencil what's something i might do with that pencil i might sharpen that pencil so let's make a sharpen method and so we don't, we're not thinking about the variable. We just know, hey, I can't write with it right now because it's not sharp. So we sharpen it. And when it's sharp, self.isSharp becomes true. And there it is. So I'm not passing it a parameter. I'm just telling it to sharpen, and all of a sudden it's become sharp. Okay? Next, what I want to do is I want to... Um, write a method for printing with our pencil okay so we're gonna we're gonna print with our pencil so it's gonna be called write and you write words okay and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply print to the screen the words if our pencil is sharp so if self dot is sharp 
then we'll print the words. But further than that, if there's too many words, you know, if words is greater than, we're going to make this pencil get dull really fast. If the words is greater than 15 words, uh, sorry, we'll, we'll do 15 letters. Uh, we need to get len words. There we go. If the length of the words is more than 15 letters, you know what that does? That makes your pencil dull. Uh, magically, you're able to finish writing it out before it gets too dull. But that's that's it. It's going to get dull. All right. Um, so if we're sharp, we print the words else um, you don't. So I'll just leave, you know, else blank. So there we go. Okay, so we got a write and we got a sharpen. Looks good. And we got some default values. All right, let's try running this. And let's try out a pencil. So notice that I was able to make a pencil without supplying the necessary values because we gave it default. But if I want to make it, you know, something different, you know, then I'd have to. All right, let's see here. Um, I'm going to try and write. So p1.write. Hello, this is my pencil. Okay, so um, what happened? Well, nothing happened, right? Because my pencil is dull. Because my default pencil is dull. So I'm going to say uh, sharpen. All right, and now I'm going to say p1.write. Hello. Uh, P1 dot write. Hello, this is my pencil. And then I'll say hello one more time. Oop, what happened? Well, our pencil went what? Dull. Because that was more than 15 letters. So I have to sharpen my pencil again. All right. Kind of cool, right? Um, so that's just kind of how these things work together. Now, what I want to finish talking about, I said we're going to come back to the first class. Now it's time to do that, is I want to... Um, I want us to see how we can use objects within objects. This is a relationship that's so important in computer science. We call it HASA. H-A-S-A. We're also going to talk about is a, a little... Well, pretty soon, actually. So has a. So has a means that we just mean that we have that value. So, uh, for example, the student has a name, has a gender, and has an age. Those are all objects. So we're actually quite familiar already with, a, with an object having another object. Student is an object, and that student has a string object for a name, a string object for a gender, and an integer object for an age. But... What might seem a little bit uh, confusing to you at first is that we can also give it objects that from classes that we've created. So we can give our student a pencil. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say self.pencil. And um, we can we could make the pencil be an object that they have to supply in the parameter. Or we can just make it um, right here. We could say self.pencil. Um, I can use the keyword uh, none, meaning that we don't have a pencil right now. Okay, uh, self dot book uh, none, right? So right now the the student doesn't have a pencil or a book, and then I can make it to where we could write a method that gives the student the book, or we could just change that value directly. So um, how about we say like give pencil? And then what will we take in? I'll say pencil. Oh, I gotta have self. And then, sorry, you'll see me forget to write that self all the time because we don't have to write it in Java and that's what I do in my other languages. All right, so uh, pencil. So then I'll just say self.pencil equals pencil. Now I could have defined, I could have actually left this part out without saying none, but I wanted, I want any variable I plan to use, I want described in my constructor, even if they're left empty, because I like to see them all at one place. That's a personal preference for me. Uh, it would still have a pencil after you ran this method, but I like there to be a pencil variable, even if it's just none. All right, let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to say... All right, so we'll make a student. I'll call it again st1, whatever variable I want I 
name I want is fine. Um, student, and I'll make it myself again. Um, mail, um, 41. All right. Now, uh, you'll notice that I should have a book and a pencil described there. I can actually bring that up. And you, there's nothing there. You can see, like, if you try and print it, it's going to actually tell you none. There is nothing assigned to that value. It's it's empty. But it is declared to be something at some point. So let's make a pencil object. So I'll say pencil1 is equal to pencil. And my pencil object is going to be... Um, you know, one thing that I think would be helpful is let's make sure we view our variables so we can see that. So when we ran this program, we loaded these three classes that aren't automatically built in. There are classes that are automatically built in, but these we've loaded. We've got a student object right there, right? You'll notice that it describes it as a object at a certain memory location, right? So now we're going to make a pencil. So I make a pencil, um, and I'll just do the default again. And so you can see we now have a yet an another object in our variable list. We have our three classes. And then we have our two objects that are instances of those classes. I'm now going to assign that pencil to student1. So I'm going to say st1. I could say pencil equals pencil1. I could do that. But we wrote a variable to actually change that method. So I'm just going to say give pencil. And we pass our pencil as a parameter because it's it's got a parameter there so now i do that um and you'll notice that my variable list didn't change right all that changed was that now st1 has a pencil it's got a pencil object and that pencil object that he has is indeed the same pencil at the same memory location. Your memory location, of course, is, is going to likely be different than mine because it's, you know, randomish. Uh, now that we got that, we can we can do something else. So let's let's go back and let's say def write hello. Okay. So when we say write hello, we're going to say um, we're going to we're going to say print. No, I won't say print. I'm not going to print because it prints for me. Sorry. Um, we're going to call the write method with the pencil. So how do we call the write method with my pencil? Well, I say self.pencil.write, and I'm going to write, hello, my name is str self.name. Okay. Good. So very similar to say hello, but now just a little bit different. Okay. All right, let's make a student. Um, I'm going to give my student a pencil. You'll notice, though, check this out. I, I'm not actually making a pencil first. I'm just going to say give pencil, and I'll call the pencil constructor. And now you'll notice that I don't have that here because I can't access it again. I call that an anonymous object when you make an object inside a parameter. But don't worry, it's still there. Student1 definitely has it. So a new pencil was created. It was just created and immediately assigned. So our only reference to it is the fact that student1 has it. All right, now um, let's say write hello. There's no other parameter besides uh, the the self, so I just put the parentheses, and of course nothing happens because our pencil's not sharpened. So I want to sharpen my pencil. So I have to say sd1 pencil, then I can say dot sharpen. Now my pencil sharpened. Now I can say write hello, and it says hello. My name is Jed. Of course, if I try and say that again, what happened to my pencil? It got dull. So I sharpen it again. Not st1.sharpen, st1.pencil.sharpen. Right? So I've sharpened st1 pencil, and now I can say write hello again. 
So you can see how this gets really elaborate of these different you know, variables within, you know, different objects within objects that have methods. Uh, so I'm, I'm accessing, when I say pencil at Sharpen, I'm accessing student one. I'm accessing student one's pencil. Then I'm sharpening it. All right, I want to conclude this lesson with talking about how can I make this a little easier. Uh, right now, I've got all these different, um, you know, things I have to make every single time I test the class. Let's work about, let's talk about making a tester. So we could call it just main. But we can also call it test. So it's up to you. But I want you to pay close attention to my indentation. It's not inside a class. It's all the way to the left. And so what I'm doing there is I'm not making a function. I'm making a, I mean, I'm not making a method. I'm making a function. This is a function. Also notice there's no self. So this is just a, a function I'm writing to help me test my class. Okay. And I could fill this in any way I want. I could do my student here. And so then as I expand and build on my class structure, I always have a way of testing it. Um, right? And I could even write a give book method as well. But I'll leave that as an exercise. So we'll just get on a pencil. And then I will say just like we tested before, that should not work. So I'll comment that should should not print. Okay, and then I'll sharpen my pencil. And that should work. There we go. So now that gives me a couple different options. When I run the module, I can nothing happens, but I've got this test function here. Notice it's a function, not a method. Um, so I can say test and we can see that I have messed up stud net is not defined. Well, I think it should be. There we go. And that just gives me a way to test out my stuff and make sure that it's working the way I want. If I want it to run every single time, I can call this main and I can do one of these things. If underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals quote underscore underscore main underscore underscore quote. Uh, you know, usually we just do that, um, but I'm, I'm welcome to just say test. Now it will automatically run. Okay, so that's it. We're going to get some exercises. You just need lots of practice so this kind of stuff gets familiar. Notice that we write classes to be able to make objects and when we make an object we say the name of the class then we fill in the parameters as defined by the constructor constructors are these weird looking double underscore methods called init okay and that is all